Here's a recap of lesson two from geometry topic A. And we need to be able to work with precise definitions of line segment, point line. Um, we're going to make a formal construction or three. And we're going to work with equilateral triangles. And you need to work with uh, critiquing the work of others as our math practice. We're working through modeling and exploration. So the first thing that we did in class is we did the opening exercise. So you grabbed somebody else's homework last night and you followed their steps on problem number one to see if you could do the same exact construction that they did and that there were no problems with their construction. So um, grab yours that you did and spend about five minutes uh, trying to work your way through it. Follow it word for word for what you actually wrote and uh, see if it makes sense. And then you want to um, tweak it a little bit or add or take away steps that you don't need or clarify some of the steps that you have. So pause this and take care of that for a moment. Okay, now that you've taken care of that, uh, what kinds of problems do you have following your directions? Um, and how can you avoid these problems in the future? So jot down your thoughts on that. And think about ways that we could actually start grading or writing out a rubric for the different steps involved in writing a construction. Okay, so some common errors that you found. Hopefully you found some problems with the vocabulary that they were using or you were using. Uh, maybe you weren't clear on your steps. Um, Maybe you were using words such as take that point instead of which point you actually mean. Maybe you're not labeling it correctly. So criteria for a rubric, hopefully some criteria that you came up with were use the correct vocabulary the correct way. Um, be simple and concise in your steps. Um, each step should be one instruction. Don't try to get too much done in each step. Uh, make sure you label everything. And lastly, don't use pronouns, so that, this, it, over there. Make sure you're very clear with your labels to know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, so the answer that I came up with whenever I did this example was the following. So draw circle J, so I'm going to take this uh, point and I'm going to label it J. So now I have point J and I'm going to put a point S out here. Okay. And so now I've got point J and point S. And I'm going to draw circle J centered at J and radius JS. So centered at J and radius JS. Make sure I've got that right. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So if I draw my circle there, I've got it. My step one is done. Draw circle S, center is S, radius is SJ. So if I draw circle S, my point of my compass goes on S. And I shouldn't have to adjust it because SJ and JS are in fact the same measure, so they are considered congruent. They are in fact the exact same segment. Okay, so then label one intersection of these circles. There's my intersection of the circles and label that M. And then if I just finish up by drawing segments. So let me draw some segments here. So I'm going to draw segment uh, S to M, J to M, and J to S. So J to M should be a radius, J to S should be a radius, S to M should be a radius. So all of the sides of the triangle have to be the exact same because they're all radii of the circle. The next thing we did was we had to try to construct three equilateral triangles where the first and the second triangles have the same have a common side and the second and third triangles have a common side. So what does that mean? Um, we just grab three equilateral triangles. So we've got one there. If I copy that, control C, control V. And I rotate that. 
They now have a common side. And so I want three of them like this. And if I rotate this one around, so the end result would be a picture that looks something like that. Okay. So you're going through your exploration one. You should spend about 15 minutes on this. And then um, when you're done, you can look and see what my actual work looks like. So pause this and try it on your own. Okay, so once you've paused it and you tried it on your own, um, this is my set of directions. I have seven steps in my directions. I'm going to draw segment AB. Okay, so if I go up here and draw, draw a segment, here is segment AB. Maybe I want that to be a little bit thicker. There, there's segment AB. And I put my A on there and my B on there. Okay. Draw circle A centered at A with radius AB. Okay, so draw circle A. Um, I might need to make my AB just a touch smaller. Nope, I think it just makes it. Okay, so there it is, circle AB. Draw circle B, centered at B. So flip this over here. Don't change the width at all. Okay, there's circle B, centered at B with radius BA. Remember, AB and BA are the exact same segment. Label one intersection as C. So there's one center intersection as C. And the other intersection as D. Okay, and then I'm going to draw circle C centered at C. So I'll go up here, put my compass centered at C. And it has radius CA, done. Label the new intersection of circle C and A. Circle C and circle A intersect up here. There's where circle C and A intersect. And I'm going to call that E. Okay. Draw all segments that are congruent, which means have the same measure, to segment AB. Okay, so let me move my compass out of there and change colors so you guys can see it. So A, C would be the same length. C, E would be the same length. E, B would be the same length. Um, B, D would be the same length. D, A would be the same length. And B, C would be the same length. And there you have it, all three triangles sitting there. Um, kind of flipped over from what I said. I, I had drawn them this way, but they came out the other way. But you can see the three triangles, and they share the sides. CB is a shared side, and AB is a shared side. Okay, so then our next exploration, we spent 16 minutes in class working and constructing a regular hexagon. So read the directions in your book, spend about 16 minutes doing that, pause the, this tape and come back once you've tried it on your own. Uh, remember, regular means all sides of the same, hexagon means six-sided figure. So you want a six-sided figure where all sides are the same length. And hint, you're doing the same thing we've been doing here. Um, so pause the video and come back and see how you did. Okay, here are my answers for the hexagon. And I'll walk through that. So draw circle K centered at K. So let me grab point K. There's my point K. And I can make it any radius I want. So I'm going to make it kind of small so this all fits on a page. So there's circle K. Um, pick a point on the circle and label it A. Okay. So there is a point on my circle, and I have labeled it A. 
um, draw circle A with the same radius uh, or the radius AK. Okay, so there is circle A. Label the intersections of circle A and K as B and F. So here is one intersection of A and K. I'll label that B. And here is the other intersection of A and K. So I shall label that F. Draw a circle B centered at B. Okay, so put this back on there. Notice I'm not changing that. So circle B centered at B, and it's going to have the same radius, so I don't change that at all. And I'm going to um, label the intersection of B and K as C. So B and K intersect here. That's my new intersection. And I'm labeling that as C. Okay, so continue to treat the intersection of each new circle uh, with K as the center of a new circle. So I'm going to take C and I'm going to make that the center of a circle. Okay, and I'm going to see if I can get my tool to work here. There we go. And then C intersects with K right here. So I'm going to call that the next letter in the alphabet. So that will be D. And then I'm supposed to make D the center of a circle. And can I get to my compass right there? Oh, no. Maybe. Kind of behind everything. Can I move it to the front? Brain to front. There we go. There's that one. And the intersection of D and K is right there. And I can call that E. There we go. So now I have A, B, C, D, E, and F are all points around K. They are all the exact same distance apart. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six of them. And so if there are six of them, that means I have a hexagon if I just connect them up. So let me grab a segment tool. We'll make it red so you can see it. So I'll take A and connect it with B, and B connected with C, C connected with E, E connected with, or D connected with E, E connected with F, and F back to A. And you should see a beautiful hexagon right there. Um, if I go up here, a six-sided figure. There is another hexagon. You can see it's the, it's the exact same shape. And those are the steps. So tonight for homework, uh, well, you need to do your exit ticket. Spend about five minutes just by your response. Uh, it's not a yes-no question, even though it's phrased as one. Uh, make sure you show your work to justify why it is exactly what you say. And then do the problem set for the homework. I think it's one question. And there is a crossword puzzle. You can find it online on my website, or you can get it from me during class.